Hi, I'm Angelo Vermeulen. I'm here at the Crosskick event of EIT Health and EIT Food. I was invited here to talk about food and health, but from a bit of an unusual perspective, from the perspective of space exploration. I'm active in the field of space exploration. I'm a space systems researcher. I'm also a biologist and I'm a visual artist. I've been talking about how we can keep astronauts healthy in deep space. First of all, the creativity of some of my crew members, I must admit. Some of my crew members were just genius in the kitchen. The things they came up with. You have to imagine we only had access to shelf-stable ingredients. So these are ingredients that you can keep for a very long time without cooling. Uh, these can be traditional things like flour and honey and oil, but also more advanced things like freeze-dried vegetables, freeze-dried meats, egg crystals, etc. And like I said, some people just created beautiful dishes out of that. Um, very creative. Another thing that really surprised me is the quality of freeze-dried vegetables. That was something that really stood out for, for most of us. There's two ways to preserve food for all, uh, vegetables for a long time. You can dehydrate them or you can freeze-dry them. But when you use freeze-dried vegetables, you, you basically have to put them into water and they literally pop back into life and they taste very fresh. It's quite incredible. So that's really definitely a good solution for long-term uh, trips. Um, and then the last thing that kind of surprised me somewhat is that when you're living in conditions like this, isolated conditions, um, with a limited food supply, what you crave the most is comfort food. The very basic things like mashed potato, uh, bread, um, just a simple pasta dish, you know, the simple basic things. You really don't want any sophisticated technological food. You really crave the basic basics. Well, if we look at the best food for astronauts, uh, there are a few challenges that you need to address. Uh, the first one is you need to make sure there is enough variety. You want to avoid menu fatigue, where people get a little sick and tired of eating the similar foods over and over again. You want to make sure the foods preserve for a long time. You don't want to have spoiled food for your astronauts. And you want to make sure that the food is healthy. And that's really the big challenge here, to make foods that are at the same time, um, you can preserve for a very long time, but at the same time are still very healthy. And that's, 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 that's not so easy, but you know, it's feasible. Uh, and then it's basically, you basically have to think about it in, in long-term or short-term. For a short-term mission, you can basically give the astronauts pre-prepared meals and they can live on that for quite some time. But for very long-term missions, because of the problems of preservation and, and health issues, you might want to start growing at least part of the food in the spaceship or in the, in the, in the space base, wherever you are. The Martian is a movie that really made the idea of space farming very popular. It's the, the famous example of growing potatoes on, on Mars. And theoretically, there is absolutely uh, nothing that would prevent us from using the Martian soil uh, to grow all kinds of vegetables. Now, honestly, I think that in the near future, when we will settle on Mars and we will start growing food on Mars, it will not happen uh, by using the soil. We'll most probably use hydroponics or aeroponics. It's safer. It's also a more direct way of providing nutrients to the plant. So I think in the, in the short term, we won't really be using that soil. But maybe in the long term, when we're living there with many people for a long period of time, we might start using, uh, we might start using the soil. But growing food, growing your own fresh food in outer space, either in the space station or in a spaceship, or in a base on Mars or the Moon, is perfectly feasible. So for long-term space missions, you will have to include space farming into your food system. There's no way around. There are two major reasons for that. First of all, uh, you can only take a limited amount of supplies in your spaceship. It's very expensive and complicated to take a lot of cargo, so that's not what you want. And you want to start recycling waste and turn that back into food again. But on the other hand, and this is also really crucial, if you want to keep astronauts healthy, it is crucial to start growing fresh crops and fresh kind of, uh, uh, all kinds of plants and fruits that actually uh, can be added to the daily diet of an astronaut.
Yeah, there's a whole range of, of foods that are really appreciated uh, during, during the mission. Uh, comfort foods are definitely a favorite and like many of my crew members, I love things like mashed potatoes and applesauce and making our own bread. These are all really, really enjoyable and very nice. Some of the meals that my fellow crew members made, either um, Hispanic cuisine or Russian cuisine, was also incredibly tasty and very, very well done, just using shelf-stable shelf ingredients. Um, I didn't miss out so much because the, the mission was taking four months and it's still, it was still okay. I can imagine if you have to live like this for several years, it might be a different story. Um, but there's one particular, there's one little anecdote. At the end of my mission, we ran out of uh, powdered milk. And I was, in the evening, I was always using powdered milk in my tea. And it was kind of an evening ritual to enjoy my tea with powdered with milk. And suddenly it ran out and it actually affected me. I was really unhappy we had no more milk. And so for the last, at the end, for the last two weeks, I had to miss out on milk and I really, on powdered milk. And I, that was kind of, uh, yeah, I missed that.